Hi, welcome to my first video tutorial. I'm going to show you how I use Bejewel and Sibelius. I'm running Windows 7 64-bit and I have about 8 gigs of RAM and a Core 2 Quad processor. Although I'm running a 64-bit OS, I'm actually going to be running the 32-bit version of Bejewel. I'm doing this because in my templates I like to send my audio to my sequencer, which is Cubase, via Rewire and rewire only works in 32-bit. Now I know what you're thinking, what's the point in having that much RAM and running 32-bit apps? Well I use a little tool called JBridge that puts my 64-bit VSTs in a 32-bit wrapper so that Bejewel thinks the VSTs I'm running are 32-bit when they're actually running in an external process and a 64-bit and are able to access all my RAM. Now I know that sounds confusing but hopefully it will make sense soon. For this tutorial, by the way, I won't be using Rewire, I'll just be sending the audio straight to my sound card. Okay, so first of all, let's open Bidule. There we go. And let's delete these default modules and start from scratch. So the first thing we should add is an audio input and output which is essentially our sound card. And the part we'll be using, the output can go down here near the bottom. There we go. And we'll need to add a MIDI input. Now for this you'll need to use a virtual MIDI cable such as Biddy Oak. In this case I'm using one called Loop B30. Um, I'm only adding one input for now but in larger templates, in fact I'll show you this now, in larger templates where you have more inputs such as this and you don't want to have them all cluttering up your screen you can group them just by highlighting them, right clicking, selecting group and then filling in that and clicking OK but uh, we'll just be using the one for now. Okay, before we can add any VSTs, we should add, add a mixer. In a rewire setup, by the way, this isn't necessary, but for this it is. There's our mixer. Now we add our VST instrument. In this case I'll be using East West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, the play edition. And if you notice the two blue nodes on the top here, and the one white one, and the several blue nodes on the bottom, any on the top are inputs and any on the bottom are outputs. Blue ones are audio, white ones are MIDI. So click and drag to connect the MIDI input to, sorry, the MIDI output, this is, to the MIDI input of our, our um, plugin. And if I open the plugin in C and add a piano, You can see the, how we select an audio output here. Now we're just going to be using the first pair, which is one and two. Each of these nodes on the bottom are stereo pairs. So the first two are a pair, the second two are a pair, the third two are a pair, etc. And we've selected the first two here. Also notice that this plugin is running JBridged, which means if I open Task Manager, you will see this. It's running in this thing called orgshost64.exe and it's actually running outside of Bidual and it allows it to access all the RAM. So we take these first two outputs and we connect them up to the mixer. And now 
how we connect this stereo mixer to our audio output. If you hold control and just select one when you do this, it'll connect them both up. Right, let's see. Okay, next we need to make Sibelius play this back. Uh, we can test that it's working now, first of all, if we open that up. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but you'll be able to see it on this mixer screen here. So that's definitely working. We can follow the flow through the system there. So we'll leave the dual open for now and just minimize it and open Sibelius. Okay, and once Sibelius is loaded, in just a moment, we'll create a new score with just a piano instrument on it. So I'll play, click finish. There we go. Let's hide that for now. Now we need to tell Sibelius where to send the MIDI data it outputs. For our setup, we want to send it to internal MIDI 1. This is the first connection on our virtual MIDI cable. So we need to open the playback devices window and create a new playback configuration. So we'll create a new one, call it the dual piano. I usually use a different playback configuration for each project, but I also have template ones set up for um, more generic tasks. Okay, next we need to add internal one MIDI, which is our first MIDI cable. Notice that this is an output, whereas the one in the dual was an input. Make sure that in Sibelius's preferences under input devices, you uncheck any input devices that you intend to use as output, otherwise you'll get some nasty feedback and the program will probably crash. So if we go back into the playback configuration here, you'll need to use some kind of sound set to tell Sibelius what instruments you want to use. In some cases there are sound sets provided. Um, for Symphonic Orchestra I use Jonathan Loving's sound set as well as a manual sound set. If you don't have a sound set for your VST instrument though, it doesn't matter, you can use the non or general MIDI one or two. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The only problem without using a sound set, or the main problem should I say, is key switching becomes more tricky. Once you've chosen a sound set, click the manual sound set tab and select the MIDI output device you want to use. In this case, we only have one. Then select the number of channels you are using on the output device. Since we only have one instrument, the piano is all we need to connect to, so we only need one channel. Oh, and you must click the Use Manual Sound Set um, checkbox before you do that. So we just need the one channel. So we select the channel and we've got to assign an instrument to it. Because I'm using the sound set, it's quite easy and I just select it from the list here. And there it is, Steinway B. But if you were using the non, for instance, you'd have to either enter a sound ID down here and choose it manually in the mixer later. So click this button to select sound ID. Or if you're using the general MIDI tab uh, sound set, you need to choose a program name and again select it in the mixer manually. So we'll stick with this one. And then if we save that. Close that. If you're using a sound set you'll probably need to use a house style that came with the sound set. Or you can create your own. Um, this is I, I use a custom one that I created from several that came with Jonathan Loving's sound sets. So if I import that, changes the layout. But it also 
tell Sibelius which sounds it should be using. Once you've done all this, um, you might want to save it as a template or you might want to add more instruments and build on that. We're just going to stick with the piano for now. So now the last thing to do is check that everything's set up in the mixer. So if you go to the mixer and open Expander Piano Instrument, you'll see that it says Unallocate here and here. So you need to select in the top box either Auto or the MIDI Chan uh, MIDI cable we're using. We're going to select Auto for now and click the little speaker button. Not Notice that it fills in the channel automatically on the sound ID. Uh, ID. If you weren't using a sound set, you'll, you'd have to do this manually. So now the last thing to do is to enter some notes. And test that it works. Just to try that out. If we hit play, we should be able to see this playing back in the dual and hopefully hear it as well. And that didn't work because I muted it. Sorry about that. And there you go. So I hope you'll be able to build some bigger templates with that. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a post in the comments box below or send me an email. And if you have time, please check out my website. It's at www.totalcomposure.com and I'll probably put a link somewhere near this video so it should be easy to find. And yeah, have fun with that and have fun building templates in Sibelius and uh, you can get some really good stuff out of it.